pro-life and why are some people pro-choice so i'm really really excited so you know in order to make it an even playing field we're going to have somebody from catholics for choice which is a religious organization that believes that women um have the right to have an abortion oh. and then we have somebody from americans united for life well this is going to be interesting this is like the ultimate battle of batman and superman of abortions <laughs> batman is it is going to be an ultimate battle um you know i'm gonna i'm gonna, gonna moderate win. that debate and i hope that we get to learn both sides so that you can make your decisions about what is right for your own body what about you stan come on I, i'm doing. pro choice most most of the time mm -hmm. um and i'm pro choice in the sense that you know things happen and you know if you're not ready it's better to just do what you have to do than bring a child into this world you can't afford you can't take care of you can't provide for and then now you screw someone's life up who didn't have a choice mm -hmm. to be here or not but then you know i don't want people to take advantage of it for example on twitter you know, I'll, as then use it to like as as a contraception. <laughs> yes, no, exactly. There was there was someone on Twitter. I won't say her handle, but she took a picture and she's like, "I'm on my way to get this fifth abortion." What? Anyway, yeah, that's. I, I hope she was joking. No, she I, wasn't. I did. I did tell somebody on Twitter, like, "Can you just like back off? I'm late to an abortion because he was really bugging me." But that <laughs> that wasn't true. That's, that's horrible. Was, I was just trying to irk him. He was really, really kidding on my case, but it's not true. Um, I I personally have never had a, an abortion. I've no, I know I. people. <laughs> good stand. Um, I, but I know many people who have, and and I know people on every in my personal life who are on every side of this issue. So that's why I like. I'm I'm very excited. I, I actually want to know because like i said i know my what i believe and why i believe it but i'd like to see that debate i want to hear both sides of it and then um you know allow our listeners to really really see you know what the people that they're fighting for what do they believe and what what makes them excited to fight for either um a woman's choice to have an abortion or to uh, uh the baby's right as people usually say they say that this is a person and um some people try to say that we should have personhood for a fetus um and they firmly firmly believe it and they they have the reasons to believe it so i'm, I'm excited about that but stanley is going to be talking about something really exciting too yes marijuana and Woo! how much i love it okay not that i necessarily <laughs> love marijuana i don't smoke weed at all actually i've tried it a few times um and i've always failed at getting high you didn't have to go time. on a thing about your personal life well it's interesting it was really funny the one time the I actually got high. When I run for office, this is going to bite me in the butt. Yeah, I yeah. only inhaled American people. But <laughs> is that the, good, the right way to do it? Anyways. I don't know. We're talking about marijuana. And as you guys know, marijuana was legalized in two states this in this past election cycle. I think it was Colorado and Washington. So now these two states have legalized marijuana, and they're talking about making a push to legalize it everywhere. And the federal government is kind of in a tough place because... Is do you regulate the laws that you have on the books already and stop these two states from, you know, having legal marijuana? Or do you relax them and possibly put yourself in a situation where other states can follow suit? So we are going to have a John Walker from Legalized Pot Organization. It's called, um, why did I forget the name of the organization? I don't know. What's there. Yes, but he's going to. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Selena's gonna kill us when she hears us back. Like, oh my God, you guys, you forgot the organ. That's all right. We're gonna be talking no. about marijuana. I think people forgot exactly. That what we're is talking exactly about. why I forgot because I smoked all that weed and um, I forgot. No. Oh, I'll it's Fire it. Dog Lake. Fire Dog Lake. That sounds super interesting. I don't see that on my thing. No, because we wrote it down and you have a blank one. <laughs> oh, okay. I was confused. About it. See, it was. We're gonna be fault. talking to a senior policy analyst of Fire Dog Lake. <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. John Walker, and I really want to have a chance to talk, to talk about both sides of this argument. What's the big push to make you know marijuana legal? Isn't it a drug? Doesn't it hurt people? And if it doesn't, why is it illegal at this moment? Why have I always been told that marijuana is a gateway drug? That it's going to make me hit a kid when I'm driving through the drive through and there's a little kid riding her tricycle like that weed commercial oh, or really? <laughs> that my brain is gonna be scrambled eggs like that commercial from the 90s or that you know what did nancy reagan say dope is whack or don't do dope something like something that. something like that Those yeah like, stay in school don't look the <laughs> drugs something like that. yes and the quickie's gonna be so quick today it just happened oh so gosh that, oh yeah listen guys oh, that, really i don't even feel that fan i don't it's, know what you're it's, talking I told about you, it's not your it's not my fault oh right all right this is a game Typical of results man. that's right <laughs> But no, I'm actually really excited. We have really, I don't know, I'm, today is the first time that I felt like we have these topics that are so 
massive and then they have so much debate surrounding them i don't even know how we can cram this all in one show it's like a, what selena used to say she used to say that these shows were explosive and we used to make fun of her because we were like that's that's too much luna you're making people like feel like we're going to be talking about you know something that they've never heard of before but i think that this is the first time that i've come to the show um a little nervous about the outcome of what could happen i mean including my own emotions i feel um especially for the debate that i'm moderating about abortion i feel very strongly um to one side so i'm very nervous about my my gut reaction to what i'm gonna hear and trying to keep myself you know from this position of being in the middle and hearing out both sides without getting my own emotions stirred um i don't feel strongly about marijuana but that will be exciting to know um, what happened. I, I've i been to Amsterdam. That's all I got to say. That's all I know. You've been to Amsterdam? That's I all I'm going to say. I've been to Las Vegas in a video game because I can't afford to go to Las Vegas for real. Um, in a video game? <laughs> yes. And no, guys, listen. Along with this topic of abortion, our writer, Simone Sylvester, wrote a great editorial piece on the 40th anniversary of Roe of Ro vs. Wade. So make sure you check that out on our website, lyvbh.com. Follow us on Twitter, which is, what is it, Patty? At BeHeard underscore radio. You can also go on Facebook, facebook.com slash Let Your Voice Be Heard Radio. Is it, is it Let Your Voice Be Heard Radio? Okay, good. Because sometimes I say it wrong. <laughs> it, no, I'm going to make sure that the word radio is there. So, yes. And you can leave us a comment on our wall. Um, I know, I think, we, you know, I'm definitely a more Twitter person. So, I'm always like, tweet at us. Or you can call us. Like I said, I don't know if you give the number. The number is 212 uh, 64 five zero six nine zero three and now uh, if you missed it we're going to be coming back in a few minutes and i'm going to be talking to two people um i'm going to be talking to david nolan he's a communications director for catholics for choice um he's going to be arguing the pro-choice side and i'm going to also be talking to anna franzanello she's the staff counsel from americans united for life and she's going to be arguing the pro-life uh, side of this debate so. awesome and we will be right back after these brief messages from Hi, this is Sister Virginia Cotton, and I'll take you to that place every Tuesday morning from 6 to 10 in the a.m. on the Gospel Legends Program. We'll lift the Savior and take a trip down memory lane. How far back will I go? Tune in on Tuesday morning, WHCR 90.3 FM from 6 to 10 in the a.m. And don't forget the website. That's the three W's dot WHCR dot O-R-G. I'm so excited. WHCR 90.3 FM, New York. Hi, this is Calvin Burrell inviting you to join me each Saturday at midnight until 4 a.m. Sunday morning for the best in reggae music right here on WHCR 90.3 FM. Everything will be iry. Praise Alleluia, everybody. This is DJ Flame, and I'm your host every Wednesday from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. on the Anointed Mic Check, where we take beats back to Jesus, bringing you the best in urban gospel music where you're here. Hip-hop, R&P, house, remixes, the Caribbean flavor, artist interviews, reviews, and so much more, whatever God just drops in my spirit. Now, I'm your host every Wednesday mornings from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. Don't forget it. The show is the Anointed Mic Check, and this is where we serve up urban gospel at its best. See you then.
are back. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard on WHCR 90.3 FM. This is Patricia speaking. I got Stanley with me. We're going to have a guest correspondent, Karina. She's on her way in right now. Um, so she's going to be, you know, bringing some extra insight into this uh, debate that we're going to have. And I'm very excited because Selena is not here today. She is on vacation. She is taking the sun out. Of, I don't know where she is, actually, but I think she's in the Caribbean yes. or in a cruise. I don't know where she I, is. I saw something about, like, Florida, Disney World I this saw that morning too. on Instagram. I don't well, know. You know, Selena. I didn't even know she was going to Disney World. Trust me, guys. There will be a full photo album up by like <laughs> so, by like tonight, so the, we'll all know where she's been and how much fun she's had. Yeah, you know, you guys are right. You should follow Selena, who is always here, and today she's on vacation. She's at Miss Selena Hill on Instagram because I'm sure that her pictures are just going to be hilarious. Yes. But you know, moving along, um, let's start. Let's start this because I'm excited about this. Oh yeah. Um, you know, the debate over whether abortion should be legal or illegal is is nothing new. I mean, I think I feel like it's more new to me because it's the first time that I've actually felt like I'm in the middle. I'm in my mid-20s, and I feel like it affects me directly what uh, choice and what legal aspects of it are. But, I mean, as a teen, this was never discussed in my household. I didn't even remember the word. I didn't learn the word abortion until I was much, much older. Um, And, you know, what makes the termination of a pregnancy so problematic is that we cannot agree on many many issues um you know we can't agree whether an embryo or a fetus is human life and terminated it is akin to murder and then there is also the possible some people say that mm-hmm. it's not a life it's the possibility of a human life and it is up to the mother to decide whether to continue it or not because she's the one who's going to have to um do all these uh you know feed herself well take care of protection go to doctor's appointments and take care of yourself to um, make this uh, life grow into a human. So people, you know, there's many different sides to it. And I mean, this is only one part of it. I mean, there's also the religious side of it. And people say, um, you know, it has a soul. And there's just so many issues that people have. And and it's really not a black and white issue. Um, The people that I know that are pro-life, Sometimes they're pro-life in any case, and sometimes they're like, no, there's exceptions, and sometimes they're like, well, we just want people to be more responsible, and then the people that are pro-choice is the, sa- is the same way. It's so broad. It, you're right. It really, it really is so broad. You know, you, one minute you think you're pro-choice, but then someone says, like, what about the person who just, you know, they get an abortion because they didn't feel like using a condom, and it's like, yeah. oh, well, that's not cool, but then the person who's pro-life is like, what about the person who's raped, and they go, whoa, well, that's not cool. Exactly. It's, it's so broad, and you know, it's it's a really big topic, but before we continue, I just want to introduce Karina, who just hey. who just walked <laughs> into the studio. Sorry. Karina, Karina. That's all right, Karina, you, you made it just in time. I'm excited Thank for you to be here, be and I hope you have some good insights on this. <laughs> I do. Do you right. have spikes on your shoulders? Are you like... I do. Is that like, you like, trend? Are you like um, a Power Ranger, and like, that's like your whoa. weapon? <laughs> Don't try to play me. Stand How is that to play you? The, the Green Ranger was the best Power Ranger of all time. You're digressing. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, back to my topic. Uh, this month, we marked the 40 years since the landmark uh, Supreme Court decision, Roe versus Wade, decided that a right to privacy mm-hmm. under the due process ca- clause of the 14th Amendment extended to a woman's decision to have an abortion. And that's why we're still here and we're still arguing about this. Um I have on the line Mr. David J. Nolan. He is a communications director for Catholics for Choice. You there, David? I am. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And I also have Anna Franzanello. She's the staff counsel for Americans United for Life. Anna? Hi. Thanks for having me on today. Thank you so much for being both of you. Um, Listeners, this is Let Your Voice Be Heard on WHCR 90.3 FM. If you have any questions for us... The number is 212-650-6903, but we're much better on Twitter. So at BeHeard underscore radio if you want to let us know anything. Or you can also go on Facebook at facebook.com slash let your voice be heard radio. So um, I, I just want to start kind of like giving you the opportunity to express, you know, what are your beliefs or your positions on abortion? Um, you know, David, you work for Catholics for Choice. So what is it that your organization believes Um is, a, is allowed, should be allowed for a woman and uh, a pregnancy? Um, we represent the vast majority of Catholics who acknowledge that abortion is sometimes necessary. Um, we have seen over the years that Catholic women have abortions at the same rate as those of women of other religions and of no religion. Catholics use contraception at the same rates and Catholics support access to legal abortion at the same rates as do other Americans. And we think that it is completely at one with Catholic teachings 
for women to make a conscience-based decision whether or not to continue a pregnancy. Uh, we don't think that anybody else should be making that decision for them. Uh, we certainly don't think that bishops or cardinals should be speaking out against it. Uh, we think that the best person to make that decision is the woman. And she can consult with whomever she, she, she wants to, but um, she shouldn't be forced to have to deal with other people condemning her simply because she has decided that she is not, the, not in a position to continue a pregnancy. Very well. Thank you for that. And Anna, um, you know, you work for Americans United for Life. Can you say uh, your organization's position on abortion? Yeah, I mean, we stand for, um, you know, the vision of Americans United for Life is a nation that welcomes all life and that protects all life in the law. And we're a legal organization. Um, we do a lot of legislative work as far as passing life-affirming laws. Um, and, and so that's really our vision is, is for a nation that respects all human life in law and really welcomes all human life. Um, and again, we, you know, it's a very, um, it, it's not a mother against her child. And I think that's often what, um, you know, the, the, the idea of abortion advocates is often that, you know, it's, it's either or, that we have to, you know, it's for the mother's life or, or for the baby's life, but that we really are, a, you know, see um, the, a life, life-affirming laws as being very pro-woman and that we don't accept this idea that women have to have abortions and we believe in, in a society that, will, that, that will, where women don't have to have abortions and that can respect women um, and, and that's really the goal of, of AUL. Very well. And Anna, uh, just to continue on with you, are, are there any exceptions to your organization's stance on abortion, you know, rape, incest, health risk to the mother, signs that the child is not developing well, etc.? Uh, we, we, like I said, we're a legal organization. We pass a lot of um, legislation. So um, we work with several states. It's, it's not uh, really our approach is very incremental, um, kind of a step-by-step um, approach. And so we recognize that not all um, laws are going to um, it, it, there, there may be exceptions in some laws, uh, but we don't, uh, I mean, we do respect all human life. Um, something, you know, like a, a, a baby that has a deformity or those kind of things, it's, you know, that's still a human life that needs to be valued um, and respected. But um, whether or not we pass uh, or we support a piece of legislation, and I should distinguish, you know, I work for Americans United for Life, but there's also Americans United for Life Action, which would be doing the lobbying end of things. Um, the distinction in the laws for as far as which group does, does which group does what, um, but you know so that but what the kind of legislation that American Jail for Life Action might support in the end may have exceptions built into it, um, but that might not be uh, recognizing that the political process that might be necessary to pass a bill, but that's not. Um, always the ideal piece of legislation. Okay, and and for you, David, I mean, I know you mentioned that you feel that, um, you know, it's a woman's choice whether she decides to terminate a pregnancy or not, but does your organization see that there maybe are times where abortion shouldn't be necessary? Um, you know, maybe she was irresponsible, um, and you feel that maybe... Uh, it should be. We should put more emphasis on the woman just taking care of herself before she becomes pregnant. Uh, we're not in the business of condemning women for the decisions they make about their lives. Uh, I, I, th- I, I think that the organizations who do that and who try and put barriers in the way of women who are seeking to exercise their reproductive choices um, have a very patronizing attitude towards women uh, uh, and the decisions that they make. Um, Obviously, nobody ever wants to have an abortion, but sometimes it is necessary. Um, And for that reason, it's very important that services are safe and legal. And this is a position that we uh, adopt both here in the United States and in many other countries around the world where we work. And I think that the idea that any organization should try and put more barriers between women and uh, uh, and their reproductive choices um, and the fact that they have failed to stop women having abortions suggests that their, their, their goal is uh, ultimately doomed because women will always want to have abortions, uh, some women will always want to have abortions, and it's very important that those services are available for them. Right, and just to continue, this question is going to be for both of you. I mean, I'm going to start with Anna, and then I'm going to go to David. Um, is the struggle over abortion rights about women's autonomy to decide what she wants for her body and when she wants it, or is it about the definition of life? Like, Anna, can you tell us what do you say about this? Well, I would just even, you know, say that we're not for condemning women. Um, I would say no pro-life organization that I know condemns women 
that um, seek an abortion. But we really are looking for, we're, we're really really looking for um, you know, a, a culture that respects life. And, and I think that respects women as well. I, and I, I would totally agree that no woman wants to have an abortion. I used to actually, when um, before I went to law school, I did what's called sidewalk counseling, where I would speak to women who were going into abortion clinics, um, helping offer, offer them alternatives, to abortion, and, and through that, and what I learned right away is you always ask questions first. You can never assume why anyone is doing anything. So I would, I would ask women, you know, well, why are you here? Why are, why are you seeking an abortion? And every woman has her own story, and, you know, I, I would say that describing the women that I speak to, most of them felt, the, the vast majority felt alone, trapped, and scared, and that's why they were at the abortion clinic. And so I absolutely agree that no woman wants to have an abortion, but we have a problem with when we've constitutionalized abortion in our society is that there's pressure on women to seek an abortion, that, that is, that's considered the solution to what might be, you know, a, a, a situation of economic hardship um, or whether or not they, they, you know, they feel like they don't have the emotional support. Um, so there's, by having this, like, big abortion industry, constitutionalized abortion, a lot of women feel pressured and, and, and pushed into abortions. Um, and that, that's my experience from talking to hundreds of women going into abortion clinics that absolutely agree none of them want to have an abortion. Uh, so it's not about, you know, when we're talking about, um, you know, being described as just placing barriers in front of women. That's not, that's not what uh, the pro-life movement is. is. It really is a life-affirming movement in which we want to have alternatives for women to really have, have a, a society that respects women for all of us, for, for, for every aspect of our life, for our fertility um, as well, and that we don't see motherhood as a burden um, and that society doesn't pressure women into seeing, you know, a, an unplanned pregnancy as this, as this burden where, that they have to take care of through an abortion. Um, and yeah. so that's, a, I would just push back that, I, I, you know, really when the, the pro-life movement is described as, as putting burdens on women or that we're trying to repress women somehow, like, you know, I'm a woman, <laughs> um, I, don't, I shouldn't have to uh, explain that, but oftentimes when I'm in these debates, I feel like, you know, I, I need to say that. Like, I, I am a woman and I, I want society to respect me as a whole um, and not feel pressured into these situations where I have to pit my fertility um, against everything else that, that I want to achieve. Um, well, I'm a woman too. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, I, I've, I've definitely uh, personally never felt push to uh to have an abortion or right. or a friend so i mean you know i guess it depends on on views of you know where you go have them but you know david i wanted to ask you the same question i mean what do you, what, what is it about is it about women's autonomy or is it about the definition of life because well, Patricia, I, I really agree with you and uh, and uh, I, I, I i live in the same society that anna lives in and i do not see these pressures on women to have an abortion um Women uh, are often forced by their circumstances to do that, but they're not external pressures placed on women to have an abortion. It is a choice that they make. And we can see whether abortion is legal or not, um, which uh, is another issue Anna raised. In countries where abortion is illegal, you still find women having abortions, often at higher rates than they do in countries where it's, Ill where it's legal. And the problem is that so often it is, it's unsafe, and women end up um, uh, injured, and some even lose their lives as a result of that. And that's why it's very important that these the services uh, services are, le are, are legal. Mm -hmm. um, as regards I whether it's a woman's issue or a life issue, I think it is about women's autonomy, very much so. Um, and in order to play a full and equal role in society, which is something that I am very, very much in favor of, women have to have control over their fertility. And until such time as we, we, we create the perfect contraceptive that works in every single instance, which I'm afraid is highly unlikely ever to happen, we are going to need uh, access to abortion services for those women who, who want one. Yeah, and uh, uh, just to, okay. no, uh, go ahead, go ahead, and I was just going well, to add to add that. that. I think an area of, of common ground here, when you're talking about circumstances, is, is why women feel pressured into abortion. I, I wasn't necessarily saying everybody's coerced by another human being, but that this is an area of common ground that we do want to work, I think, both sides together for uh, that there isn't, that there aren't circumstances that women feel pressured into abortion. And I, and I think there are, you know, when you're talking about the need for abortion, um, oftentimes that, that word is used, I, I would think that you're using that to say economic pressures or those kind of things. And, and so I think 
um, you know, both sides can agree, we want to work towards a society where women don't ever feel that they have to, that, that an unplanned pregnancy um, is, is one that they can't carry to term. But right. also, on the, you know, we're talking about the anniversary of Roe. I just want to point out, like, if you read the decision of Roe, a lot of the reasons that they give why women, um, you know, why, why there's this need for abortion, constitutionalized abortion, and states can't restrict it, they're all reasons that would <laughs> apply equally to somebody who has a two-year-old um, or a one-year-old. They're, they're just talking about, you know, raising children, not necessarily burdens of pregnancy itself. Um, you know, and, and, and again, when we're talking about the life of the mother in, in certain um, situations, um, you know, with a, with a high-risk pregnancy or those kind of things, um, usually the solution there is not a direct abortion. So a lot of times when we hear about these, um, these complications with pregnancy or whatever, we're talking about um, early delivery and, and not what would be considered a direct abortion as well. But going back to the anniversary of Roe and the reasons why women have abortions, I, I really should ask, like, would you be allowed to kill a two-year-old or a one-year-old? And so when you're talking about is this about women's autonomy um, or is it about the definition of, of life, I think, you know, yes, it's, it's probably a little bit of, of both. Um, but, you know, science is pretty clear um, that a, hu a unique human being with its own DNA is formed at conception. Um, so then the question is, do we respect all human life and protect it in law? Um, right. Anna has just shown why uh, her movement it, 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 it has got no standing when it comes to talking about women's rights. She starts talking uh, 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 about infanticide. Oh, snap. And it's just absolutely outrageous that you would try and introduce that kind of thing when we're talking well, about why women is it absolutely pregnancy. outrageous? Why, I mean, we're talking about, when you look at the, the reasoning in Roe, it's talking about the burdens of raising children. So why is that, why is it absolutely outrageous for me to apply that to children that are because born? That doesn't that's actually, what, because it doesn't happen. This is not what the issue is about. The issue is about whether women have access, should have access to legal abortion or not. And I, as a representative of Catholics for Choice, think very strongly that women, A, should have access to abortion services when they need them, but we have also sponsored and supported legislators who have introduced bills giving child support, increasing child support, and, and, and a better child care for women who choose to continue their pregnancy. Right, guys, I, I understand that you both have something to say about this, and I really, really want to hear both sides, but we have to take a very short break. I'm so sorry to cut you off, Anna, you definitely have time to retort. Um, we're going to take a very short break here on Let Your Voice Be Heard. Um, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to David J. Nolan. He's a communications director for Catholics for Choice, and we're also talking to Anna Franzanello. She's the staff counsel for Americans United for Life. We'll be right back here on Let Your Voice Be Heard. Hospitality Academy Incorporated. AHA is a school that provides training and education to those interested in pursuing jobs in hotels, restaurants, spas, catering halls, and on cruise ships. AHA offers career retraining and workforce development for those displaced by the current economy. AHA provides direct job training for entry-level positions such as restaurant servers, hotel guest room attendants, bus persons, hotel banquet workers, maintenance workers, and laundry attendants. AHA's accredited curriculum is provided by the American Hotel and Lodging Association. AHA is licensed by the New York State Department of Education. 
Kimche classes begin every six weeks starting February 11th, 2013th, and run five days a week from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. for six weeks. A new cycle of classes begin every six weeks for a total of eight sessions per year. AHA's mission is to deliver highly trained professionals ready to meet the guest service needs of the hospitality industry. For information about tuition, call 212-222-5849 or visit applewhitenyc.com. Absolutely oh. nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm loving this show. You loving this song, <laughs> too. We are back on Let Your Voice Be Heard, but I just bust a mental cat daddy. If you don't know what that is, neither do I. <laughs> and we are talking about Roe versus Wade and abortion rights, or maybe not so much. And we have Mr. David Nolan and Anna F. Patricia on air you know, right now. Oh, you said Anna F. I thought you were saying that her last name was Patricia. I was like, no, no it's not. <laughs> Yeah, and, we F, and Patricia is on here moderating a very lively discussion and we're going to get right back to it right back yes we are um, guys um, I'm sorry uh, you know David and Anna like I had to go to commercial breaks so I hope that I didn't cut you off mid sentences um, and I, I just want to continue I want to this is for you, David. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we were talking before, and you were talking about, oh, you know, it doesn't make any sense because Anna's talking about infanticide, and it's not the same as an abortion. And, I mean, I just want to look at this, the other end of the spectrum. If someone is brain dead, uh, a vegetable, and uh, we could get rid of him because, you know, he has no autonomy. He, he, his brain is dead, and he requires somebody to take care of them, another human to survive. Could we see that as the same that way that we see abortion where we have a woman and she must take care of this fetus for it to survive? And in that case, you know, you argue that it's totally fine. Would it be also okay for, you know, an, an, an adult person who is also in the same circumstances? Um, as an organization, Catholics for Choice does not get involved usually with discussions around end of life care. Um, and, um, I don't think that they are, uh, similar at all, uh, in, in that, uh, somebody, uh, at the end of their life, um, has, one hopes, a, a family to support them. And it is entirely up to them to make whatever decisions about health care that, um, that, that, that should be made. And Anna, what do you have to say uh, to that? I mean, do you feel do you, you never got to rebut? And I said, I you, I love yeah. <laughs> you. Know, <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I could say, you know, your point. I think you're trying to make is that in both situations, this, this person is dependent. So is it is it that if a person is dependent, if a human being is dependent on others, is that when we say that their life does not need to be protected in law? And now, I think David's right in that there's, um, you know, we're talking about especially the specific example you gave about like brain death and whatever. I mean, there's a lot of like specific uh, medical definitions that go in, into that and, and, you know, what does that mean um, that would take a long time to parse out. And um, so, I mean, we could, that, that's probably a discussion for another day, but it is an interesting thought is, is the reason why a fetus um, is not, you know, people think should not be protected in law to the same degree as a born baby is, is merely because it's dependent on another human being and not whether or not it's alive, but is it, is it our dependency on other people that makes us allowed to be killed or not? Um, so I think that that's a valid point to bring, a, a, analogy to bring up, but again, you know, it takes a lot to parse it out. But going back to what David said earlier about, you know, my not being pro-woman um, or whatever, I think, you know, and, and I'm a lawyer, so I love the legal aspect of um, Roe and, and Casey and all these line of, of cases uh, in the, the abortion um, cases, which maybe not everyone finds as interesting as I do. Uh, but, you know, we have Roe versus Wade that gives these reasons for abortion, which, you know, I was pointing out could be equally applied to a mother of a one-year-old. But then in Planned Parenthood versus Casey in the early 90s, the Supreme Court sort of shifted its rationale for abortion and uses the argument that women rely on abortion uh, when contraception fails uh, is, is sort of their, their line of argument, um, and that women need abortion uh, to achieve our, e- our equality in society. Um, and I would say as a woman, I find that, that actually pretty offensive um, to say that, that I somehow, without um, drugs or surgery, can't reach my full human potential. And 
I just like to throw this out there that what that says about women is that we were created inferior, that there's something about us that unless we correct it, um, we can't achieve our full human potential. And this is where I think, you know, I love working for Americans United for Life. It's a very pro-woman, pro-life organization, and that we see that we reject that idea that women have to somehow change ourselves uh, in order to reach our full human potential. We believe that women were not created inferior, that we can, that we don't have to deny um, our fertility, that we don't have to pit ourselves against our children in order to reach our full human potential. And again, you know, I would like to say, I think this is an area of, of extreme common ground on both sides of the issue that we really want to do work so that there aren't circumstances where women feel pressured into abortion, economic, those kind of things. Um, and, and I would say, when we have constitutionalized abortion the way we do, we don't ask society to meet, uh, to, to correct certain injustices against women, pregnant women, um, mothers, those kind of things, because there is this out of abortion. And I think that that's what, you know, part of the problem with this vast constitutionalized abortion is, is that people don't, that, that society isn't responding to these injustices towards pregnant women, um, poor women, those kind of things, the way that it should be. Fine. Um, Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> Sam, you had a question here. Anna, um, really quickly, I also love looking over legal documents and over cases, yeah. so you're awesome. Um, I, <laughs> to, I want to throw that in there really quickly. And on to the argument that she said in regards to Planned Parenthood, saying in a sense that women need, a, you know, abortion, abortions or abortion rights to even the playing field. Is that more or less what you were saying? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so that's what the court said. It, it sort of shifted because there, in Roe versus Wade, which actually even a lot of liberal scholars would tell you Roe versus Wade is a crap decision. Um, it's not good legal reasoning. Um, it's been it's been criticized by by liberal law professors as well as conservative ones. So, um, it, it, but the court in Planned Parenthood versus Casey, about twenty years after Roe, when it's looking at the decision and it's trying to ground it in something, because before it's in these penumbras and emanations of. Of a, of a constitution, of a, um, a provision of the constitution. So it's trying to find a new rationale. And what you have is you have a plurality decision. Um, so not even you know full majority of the court, but this plurality decision that's got a lot of like loose language in it. But what the, the the real hook that they've shifted to is this reliance interest that women have. We've structured our lives around the idea of abortion. So kind of what the court is saying is it doesn't matter if it was in the constitution or not. Um, but we're, we're basically saying that our society is now um, structured around the idea of abortion, so we have to keep it. Um, and I think that's, that's hmm. offensive to me as a woman saying, you know, basically like that, that society can't, um, can't work around women and, and really respect our full human potential as, as something that we can achieve without abortion. I think if I can get a word in here for a second. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I think that, you know, we can... We can discuss and dissect legal rulings as much as we like, and uh, I, I'd be hard-pushed to find a single legal ruling that I didn't have some criticism of, whether it's loose language or, 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 or anything else. But the reality is that the uh, only difference that I can see between women and men is uh, the ability to reproduce. Um, uh, women in every other way are or should be completely equal to men. And that is why the, there is a need for both contraception and abortion if there is to be a level playing field. And right. I think that for somebody to deny that suggests they're not actually paying attention to what's going on. Uh, well, what you're doing is you're saying that the male... The male I don't recall the, any the, the way are Hold on, guys, hold on, guys. What? Hold on, guys. Hold on. And, and, and. One second. We're going to let him finish first, and then you okay, can respond. And I promise I'll let sorry, you respond. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, that, that is the one difference. Uh, it's not a defect. Uh, it's, in fact, it's a, it's, it's a benefit. And um, it's something that society has to and does, fortunately, in most circumstances, pay attention to. And as I say, that is why it is vitally important that um, women have access to abortions and contraception uh, as they decide they need them rather than anybody else. And, and I would say, you know, the way you described it is it's the only difference and so this is why women need it. Basically what you're, what that, um, that holds up the male model of being able to, um, the, the male model as being the ideal and that women somehow have to conform to that male model if we want to 
participate in society in the workforce and those kind of things. And, and that's what I'm going to jump in I now. absolutely agree. I absolutely right. agree that women and men were created differently, and I don't think that society needs to push women into imitating the, this male autonomous um, reproductive system, but that society needs to accommodate women and the fact that our, that we do carry children, that, that that is how we were created, and that we don't need to adjust ourselves to become like men, but that society needs to respond to injustices towards women um, in the workforce and, and those kind of things and, and, and actually respect the fact that we were created different and not force us into this um, uh, into this this sort of reproductive life that is divorced from um, the fact that we carry children. And I'm going to jump in really quickly. Sorry one, about one that. One moment. I've been, I've been I'm like, Patricia and I are fighting over who goes next. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And you guys are fighting over who goes next. We're oh, fighting here, Jim. Don't worry. Go ahead, Stan. And I completely disagree with you. Then I stopped and I listened. And you make a very st- strong point. Very strong point. And I thank you for, I thank you for saying that. But let's backtrack a little bit. Let's look at the other yeah. side. What about those young 12, 13, 14, 15 year old women who it's not a choice of decision, but a choice of maybe immaturity or mistake or of ignorance who become pregnant. Don't they have don't they have that right to decide what they want to do? Because in a sense it is impeding their ability to be on an equal playing field. Um I went to I went to junior high school with someone who got pregnant at eleven years old and you know what? That held her back from doing a lot of things because she had to raise a child. And, you know, just to add to that, before you guys um, answer, I mean, bringing it to even a more global perspective, I actually went to school, to middle school and high school with family, so I oh, definitely yeah. know what he's com- where he's coming from. But I was, I was born in Latin America where abortion is um, illegal under absolutely every single circumstance. Right. I mean, recently there was a case of a young woman in the Dominican Republic who was denied getting chemotherapy because she was nine weeks pregnant. I mean, and abortions happen all the time. I remember hearing about them all the time. We don't say abortion, but we know what they're talking about because we use herbal medicines and things and 95 to 97 percent of them are unsafe so you know in the real world um what we really want to live in a world where women are told yes have children and it's beautiful and it's fantastic but it doesn't seem to mesh with the reality that we're living so well, how do you answer that anna like what do you say to that that reality well, I mean- there, there are several pieces to, to the questions that you guys are asking. And, you know, so we're talking about young teenagers that are getting pregnant. There's, there's other issues unrelated to necessarily abortion uh, that, that probably need to be addressed there. And that you're saying, you know, this is, uh, these are kids who, 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 you know, maybe there's, there needs to be, uh, there's, there's a lot of things that, that our society needs to work towards with um, better involvement of parents in the lives of their kids. Um, you know, we have, we have a society where that, that doesn't always happen. Um, and that, you know, teenage girls shouldn't, you know, feel pressured into sex and, and need to, you know, because I, I think generally when we're talking about these, these young people too, there's, there's a lot of factors that are going into that. So I think abortion is the solution when, when there's a problem, um, you know, of, of like a young teen being who, who's, in, who's pregnant now. So like, you know, we'd love to work to, to as, as um, a situation where that that's not even happening in the first place, but when that does happen, um, you know, yes, there's there's comp- you know uh, complications for you know a, a teenager being pregnant as far as you know education and those kind of things as well. Um, you know, so whether or not like they they have an abortion, give the baby up for adoption, um, or raise the baby, there there are in each situation, you know, there there are um, some sort of uh, uh, you know, there, there's going to be some, setbacks. some um, and, and so I'm not denying that that there's you know whatever, but abortion is still the taking of a human life, and I think for a young teenager to go through a situation like that, and a lot of times it can be you know because they feel they feel like they have no other option and that their life is going to be destroyed if they don't have this abortion, um, you know that they're going into adulthood. I think that 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 actually you know it's going to have negative consequences on them as well emotionally thinking about what they did as a young teen. So I don't think abortion is is the solution uh, to that problem. It's it's not consequence free either. So in every situation, yes, there's negative consequences. I don't think abortion solves the problem, and um, so it, I, I don't think that that we, we need to have it legal because there you know otherwise they're going to have setbacks in, in education and other things as well. But we do right. need to work uh-huh. for. Um, that not happening in the first place. And I, and I absolutely agree with what you're saying about, you know, Latin America, too, and, and other countries. Yes, having abortion be um, restricted or completely illegal doesn't mean that abortion is going to go away completely. I understand that. Like, there's, you know, but we can, we can lower, lower the incidence of abortion. Um, there's a lot of studies that do show a connection between restrictions on abortion. Um, and, and, you know, David's throwing out um, 
certain other countries, like uh, third world countries or different things, and, and saying, you know, data shows that these women either have abortions at the same rate or higher rates. But if you look at, I think Poland's a really interesting country to look at. Am I going to get another word in today? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, Anna. Let me just finish with, I'll just use the right. example of Poland really quick. 15 when seconds. Poland restricted its abortion law, its, its abortion rates went down. Um, so it's, it's not, there's not this direct relationship, I think, that people want to show um, as far as, uh, you know, and maternal mortality rates, too, in these, these poorer countries are related to bad medicine, not the fact that abortion is illegal. Okay. Um. Uh, Go ahead, David. Uh, Anna got a huge amount of time there to, 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 to tell a whole pile of stories. Uh, but the one about Poland is the most easy and the last one to dismiss. Uh, Polish women go overseas for abortions, just like they do in Ireland, where I grew up. 4,000 women in Ireland go, go to the U.K. and more to Spain and the Netherlands as well. Um, in, in Poland, they pay underground illegal abortion providers in absolutely dreadful conditions, and those who can afford it travel to Germany. Um, so you know, abortion rates, yes, there may be very few legal abortions, but that does not mean that abortion rates have gone down. They've just been hidden. And, uh, Patricia, you made the point about what happens in many countries in Latin America, um, which is absolutely true. The situation that women find themselves in when they face a, 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 an unplanned or a, an unwanted pregnancy is are, are absolutely dire. And it, it beggars belief that anyone thinks that it's a good idea to restrict access to abortion because it forces women into circumstances they absolutely um, have little control over and there's, there, there, there's no regulation of, and they often are very unsafe. That's not to say, of course, that many doctors don't provide um, excellent services um, for, for women, even in countries where it's illegal, mm. but, um, but not all women are able to, uh, to access them. So mm. I think we're getting back to, you know, getting back to the, 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 the crux of the matter is that um, women need access to abortion um, because uh, their circumstances uh, are, are, are such that, that, that they cannot continue a pregnancy or they do not want to have a child. And I don't think that creating, as I said at the beginning of the top of the program, putting more and more barriers in the way of women is the way to go. Um, I think that what we need to do is ensure that women have access to the abortions they need, and also we should provide services uh, that support women who decide to continue a pregnancy. Um, and as I say, we at Catholics for Choice have done a lot of work in doing that um, uh, o o over the years. All right. Thank you so much, David and Anna. We actually ran out of time, and, you know, I, I, I definitely feel a lot like I learned from both sides you know you definitely both brought up issues that uh, were very important and before we take a break I just want to give you both a chance to let us know how people can learn about your organization and what you stand for so Anna uh, your organization where we can find you uh, yeah, it's Americans United for Life. Our website is AUL.org. Um, and thank you again for inviting me to, to talk today. It was, a, it was a really fruitful discussion. No problem. Thank you so much. And David? Uh, yes, uh, Catholics for Choice. And that's spelled out Catholics, F-O-R, choice.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter at Catholic for number four choice. Um, and we, um, we, I, I very much appreciate you uh, having us on and uh, organizing this, this discussion. Thank you so much. I loved having you both. This was really great. And, you know, like I said, I I'm not going to pick a side, even though I'm sure that you all know what, I, what side I stand for. But all I have to say is that um, ideally... Nobody wants to have an abortion. Ideally, we live in a world where motherhood is, is celebrated, where children are celebrated. Um, I also believe that we're not in that world yet, that the reality is that we have a lot of economic policies, a lot of policies out there that are negative to women and make it so difficult for them to be happy to be mothers. So there's definitely two sides to this, and we have to go approach it from both sides so we can get to that point where a woman, when she gets pregnant, it's okay. We're allowed to keep it. Thank you guys for listening. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard on WHCR 90.3 FM. We'll be right back with the News Roundup.
Papa don't preach. I don't know that you song. You need to I'm stop like, singing the rest of the song every time you come on air. You are I'm not a singer. I'm keeping my baby. I'm going to keep my I baby. I feel like you're plugging in yourself. Baby. Welcome back to Let Your Voice Be Heard on 90.3 FM WHC on The Voice of Harlem. And this is Let Your Voice Be Heard, where you can be educated, informed, and then empowered to make a change in the world as you see fit. And we just had a very lively discussion about abortions, Roe versus sure Wade. Was. That was very interesting. That, that was. was like watching the debate format of You Got Served. I don't yes. know if they won. Um, I do want to say um, I'm pro-choice, if you guys didn't know, but no. I really, I really want to give a big shout-out to um, to Anna. Anna um, Franzanello? Yeah, she was really good. Um, she, she gave me... I think she gave a fair... Discuss, you know, a fair defense of her stance. I didn't, I didn't necessarily agree, but I definitely appreciated mm-hmm. it, yeah. and I'm glad that you know our listeners had a chance to hear it from the other side. It was important to have this discussion. I heard, I mean, we also heard somebody who's, um, the way I see it, pro-choice movement is almost like not even in comparison with religion. I feel like, um, I became pro-choice when I said, you know what, forget this, I cannot be Catholic, and I grew up Catholic, and he brought the stance of like, no, we can be Catholics because most, the majority of practicing catholics are pro-choice the way he brought it up yeah it that was is like, true. let's take it away from the vatican and let's bring it back to the people yeah, that was, really was awesome we had two really great guests and i can't say enough about them but now guys it is the moment you all have been waiting for or at least i've been waiting for for the last 37 seconds the news roundup where we discuss <laughs> our favorite news stories throughout the week and if you guys have need to share with us feel free to call at 212-650-6903 again the number is 212-650-6903 and you can tweet us at be heard underscore radio Danielle is on the ads and the hashtags on the PC ones and twos. Yeah, it's in the has- yes. I want to <laughs> shout out to Gabby Warbux who's been commenting about um, abortion rights and women's rights and she said something that struck a nerve to me. She said a male has no right to, to make any comment on abortion rights. I don't agree. I don't agree at all because it affects us too. It may, it may not affect us as drastically or as much not as it affects physically, women. Not physically, but it does physically, emotionally. But, it but does emotionally, affect. definitely. It, yeah, there, there are three people in this equation. The, the male, the female, and possibly a child, you mm-hmm. know, just because he may not be going through everything you go through doesn't mean he doesn't have a right to an opinion. And I think we should respect that. He shouldn't have the final say because it's your body, but he has a right to an opinion, and we should respect that. But let's get to news. Um, <laughs> There's an Armageddon going on, guys. Did you guys Armageddon. see this? the inauguration getting? Beyonce lip sync allegedly at the inauguration. Okay. Oh, Listen. To sing live oh. in the middle of January oh, yeah. <laughs> in the cold. Difficult. Now, shut up. Did uh, you plug in your voice again? Yes. All right, stop. It's me, Diddy. In the middle of this, like, oh, in the middle of nowhere, because you're, you're, you're singing to open mm-hmm. open space. It's not an enclosed area. And in enclosed areas, voice bounce back so people can hear better. In an open area, it just continues flowing. It wouldn't have sounded well. And so listen, she did what she had to do. My thing is... She's proven herself time and time again. Or We're human. Maybe she was nervous. Maybe she was under pressure. Maybe the sound quality. Yeah, yeah the maybe sound the quality. sound quality was going to be better but if she pre-recorded. So what? But she, now she's singing at the Super Bowl next week, Sunday. Danielle, thank you for that little piece of information. Is she going to lip sync again when she's pop blocking? Didn't Tina Turner do that? Yeah. yeah. Tina Turner did that before. But I know. Listen, yeah. you, can, you can. And I, honestly, I was really disappointed when I first heard. I was like, oh, come on, B. Like, what's her name? Kelly Clarkson sang live. Yeah. Um, But you can see the difference, right? It's soon as I heard Kelly Clarkson and then I heard Beyonce and I was like yeah that's pre-recorded that, that the quality was not the same but you see how much better Beyonce the quality of it was because it was pre-recorded and that's kind of like what you have to do to have kind of good television and, and that's fine the only, re- the only difference between her and maybe any other artist is that she got caught I don't want to hear it I, I really believe that other artists don't always sing live depending on where they're performing or what the occasion is like yeah. is. People need to relax. Well, when I booked Beyonce to sing at my wedding. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow I'm available to sing if you're looking. Uh-huh. I'll think about it. Yeah, that, that, that was a good audition there. Really <laughs> oh. Guys, if you think I'm a good singer, make sure you call and tell me how much you love my voice at 212-650-6903. And also give us some news. But speaking of messing up on a, on a large stage, North Korea. Remember when they had that rocket <laughs> testing and like it was a total segue. Yeah, kind of laughed at them. <laughs> well, they are now testing nuclear weapons, and guess what? To attack the U.S. Wow. They want beef. They don't want it. Listen, I think we're always trying to find to get into a conflict. Yeah. So I think those just like, oh, something else we can be involved in. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I hope not. I'm not I hope not either. either. I don't know. I think it's going to be, you know, like the Cold War is when you learn about it. Mm-hmm. And you think it was a real war, and it wasn't. It was just, it like, was just like a time period of yeah, tension. Yeah, and everybody's like, oh, I'm going to bomb you. No, I'm going to bomb you first. Yeah. I think this is going on. And when you hear about bomb threats from all over the world, I don't, I'm not even scared anymore. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, you know what? We have these really sturdy desks, guys. Just go underneath <laughs> them. You'll be good to go bomb. 
bomb shelter. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna help with the sharp though. But um, my refrigerator is a bomb shelter too. Food, cool. It's it's nice. I'll it's be nice. at your house. In but you know, I mean. I keep talking about the Cold War and all this stuff. Like, apparently, um, we're, we're giving $32 million to African troops in Mali. I'm serious. Is it, is it cold there? There's a conflict between the government of Mali and Islamic extremists um, attempting to overtake the country. Cold. So the Obama administration is looking to get involved. And uh, the State Department announced on Friday that it was making a request to Congress to provide $32 million to train troops in the African nation. I don't know how I feel about that. Ever since we trained those guys who were fighting for freedom in Afghanistan, and then they turned to Al-Qaeda and then flew that tower and tower buildings, I've been really <laughs> apprehensive <laughs> about giving people I don't know lots of money to train. Well, well I don't know. <laughs> we keep giving, well, we already gave money to um, to France because yeah. Mali used to be a colony of France. So France is getting involved cool. um, So <laughs> to to boost up the Malian troops so that they can fight the extremists. I like we're so always getting involved in something. We are. Yeah. Damn. I think France needs to just take care of it. It's just like, yeah. that was your colony getting out of control. You take care of them. Just send them a cheese <laughs> or something. France is afraid Jeez. of war. They're afraid of <laughs> no. war. America oh, really. loves war. And we're going to get like, we do love war. We're like the guy that says, we're breaking this up. But what we're really doing is punching like the both people in the face. Uh-huh. But they got Eventually, s- someone's going to punch us. It happened to Suge Knight. It can happen to America. We're like, um, like intrusive. Yeah, seriously. Well, I, th- I think it's part of this being a superpower and like yeah, you need to you need to have the status. And when you really look at reality, countries that do the best, that treat their humans, <laughs> their humans equally, that have the most rights, they're all superpowers. They're just doing their thing. Yeah, I mean, you look know? at how awesome things are in Cuba. That was I was thinking <laughs> Norway or something, but or Denmark. But yeah, Cuba. Well, yeah. <laughs> it depends who you ask. I suppose. Yeah, it yeah, does yeah. depend yeah, who you see, ask. They got good internet, and service. you never get an in between answer. No, so I love <laughs> it here. Is that a dumb mind? You know? Are what? you crying? No, oh, from the happiness. <laughs> <laughs> You know, my friend, crying? my friend, actually, she's in Canada. She was like, you want to go on vacation with me? I'm like, yeah, sure. Where do you want to go? And she was like, oh, I found this great thing for 500 bucks. And I'm like, let's do it. She's like, we're going to Cuba. I was like, I can't go to Cuba, girl. She's like, why yeah, not? She a didn't be- <laughs> she's like, you can't. <laughs> was, I had to show her that I really, uh, literally could not travel to Cuba. And she was so upset. She's like, I cannot believe this. Yeah, that so, sucks. I, I would know. love to go to Cuba. I mean, you can now go with, um, I think, a tour group. Like okay. now, it made it easier. Like you have to be part of a, you have to have it like done with a tour group so that they know exactly the places to take you. Do you think we're gonna leave? Did I go play baseball? Like what the hell, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> no, you can be fine. You can baseball because Cuba is such a threat to American privacy, so whatever. sovereignty, whatever you, you know call what? it. You know what's a threat now? What? And I'm fixing my headphones. Sorry if I, that was a lot of noise in the background. She's trying to look cute over here. You know, no, my hair was like <laughs> covering my ears. And then the thing. Anyway, apparently um, unlocking your cell phone, mm-hmm. it could become illegal. Yo, I heard about yeah, that. I th- I thought that you would bring that up. Karina's hair puffed up like three inches. when <laughs> she's yeah, No I more jailbreaking your phone. I used to do that so much. I switched um ser- my service. But before, I used to jailbreak my phone all the time. I like tried to jailbreak my phone. It didn't work. I don't know. According to this, I mean, it says that uh, the Library of Congress invalidated a copyright exemption for unlocking cell phones. It should um, be illegal. Though. So that expired. So, then, so it expired on Saturday, and that leaves the door open to repercussions of such actions. So technically, um, you can get a warning if you unlock your phone, and uh, no more jailbreaking. Wait, you get a warning? Oh, I'm still not You get like a that warning? That. Well, uh, a okay. Warning, whatever. You know, don't ignore warnings. When I was in college, I used to do a lot of downloading illegal stuff from the internet. Mm-hmm. Fun stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And I-, I wanted to watch uh, the latest episode of Heroes because I missed it on TV. So I was like, all right, BitTorrent, let's just download something. And then I got an email from my school saying that NBC contacted them. And oh, they were yay. like, they, they're saying that they could possibly do like a lawsuit against me. I, I I was crying. I was in college, and I was like, <gasps> so then I had they cut three times. <laughs> they blocked my internet. You know, I can't go anywhere until oh I went to God. them, and then they're like, they had to give me a talk. And then technically, you know, it was better. I was like, it was just the first time. I mean, I used to download a lot, but that was the first time I got caught because I was stupid. I wasn't paying attention. And then they said that technically, um, for the next like ten years, they could actually <laughs> revive that. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not out of the hook. Um, I still download. I got plenty of things, right? <laughs> At OSB, there was one kid who got like a seven hundred dollar bill for all the songs. He downloaded <laughs> yeah and I was like oh my god that could be me download look at this yeah. <laughs> look at this news roundup old news <laughs> yes. oh guys I want to talk about somebody who I think is like seriously awesome um, there was a kid by the name of Jacob um, Randolph, I think it is, in New Jersey High School. He received an acting award and while Aww. he was giving his acceptance speech he came out as L 
B G T or is it L G B T? I always get it mixed up. It's the same. L G B T. Yeah, he came he came out of the closet as you know he's a as gay. Yes, gay. Just say go. gay. He, yeah. he's, he can't be lesbian. He came out as being gay. Oh, you know, I'm a lesbian. Thank oh, you very much. Stop. All right. All right. Go. Yes, I listened to um I don't know, but anyways, yeah, he came out. He got a standing ovation, and I thought that was awesome. Well, let's be real. Five years ago, do you think that would have been the case? Probably not. Pro- pro- definitely not. I'm really yeah, happy that we can live in this society where, like, high school kids, which, you know, they can be mean, mean bullies. I'm not even going to lie. At that stage, you're either, like, you hate everybody or you love everybody. Mm-hmm. But there's no in-between. And then he can come out and have, you know, a standing ovation and applause. I mean, I feel like that brings up a foster environment where yeah. people like each other. Like, God, I wish I was in that high school. No. And then, like me in my high school. And in New Yorker, I, yeah, I don't know, actually, no. And in New Yorker, <laughs> there was an article They said that high school may be the worst place for someone 16 years old or younger because it's just so divisive and judgmental. It is very judgmental. You were, you were, never mind. I was going to say something like, you were a pretty girl. What You could have gone through anything. That's not true. I, I was about awkward point. and, you know, I mean, I was and social, but. High Even, school. You know what? It doesn't matter if you're pretty. There's always something. Somebody's going to hate yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Believe me. I was I was a teacher's pet. But then I, I graduated and I was a prom queen. <laughs> Ew. I was prom And queen. actually, when I was in yeah, co- when I was in high school, I, at least in my area, it became a trend. Like, so the whole... Because I went to an all-girls school. Mm-hmm. So, the coming out thing was more of a trend. <laughs> like, there were people coming out every week in my they school. Every single week. Every single week. I, I guess they were out. experimenting. Did they, did they went back to being uh, straight? Or uh, were they just... Maybe they were... For the most part. comfortable. Mm. I think I think that people do experiment. That I, mean, I, I, I believe somebody. When people tell me that, you know, they are. And I definitely know people... Especially you that are really, really religious, actually. And they're really torn and they were like, I've always felt this way. And actually, you know, that's really yeah. upsetting because they, they kind of want to feel like this is wrong. And then they can't. But it's not. Yeah. So, you know, I do. Kind of like a natural emotion. Right. So I do definitely tend to believe people when they tell me like I came out. But I do think that some people like to experiment. Yeah, there yeah. were definitely trends going Go on in it. high there school were and trends. in college. There there was, and in college, too. In college, it yes. was like spring semester. I'm gay and that's the way I stay. Yeah. Fall semester. I love my boyfriend, LOL. Uh-huh, like my status. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But <laughs> that's, indeed, God, that, indeed. that's really how it was. I mean, it was crazy. I, I only liked books when I was in high school. I like books too, but I like it. only if, yeah. But no. I went to I went to high school with Stanley. Come yes. on, guys, what did <laughs> I have? East New York <laughs> Family Academy. Love that school. Um, yes, awesome. But <laughs> no, what else is going on in the news, guys? We oh, the I just I you just saw. Um, it's so sad. This lady from Staten Island, Staten Island residents, mm-hmm. uh went to turkey to oh, like, this take pictures and stuff or because she's a photographer mm-hmm. and she's been missing since tuesday she Whoa. was supposed to get on her flight and she never made it her passport's still in her room and all her belongings are still there but she's disappeared she's lost complete contact with her family her Whoa. husband mm-hmm. her mom so i guess her husband's um taking a flight out there to kind of like look for her but it happens so much like i feel like people go away and then they disappear and uh-huh. there's nothing, I guess, that can be done because the government is not the same. I guess the same rules don't apply or laws yeah. don't apply. Hmm. I mean, Turkey is a pretty, you know, modern country. You know, they definitely don't have, I mean, in, in the cities, the tensions that you see in other Middle Eastern or whatever countries. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they're pretty secular, actually. I think legally, they're actually the only country that is majority Muslim where veiling is even illegal, like in schools and things. So it's actually, Turkey is a strange country. But I don't know. It seems almost like sabotage, like somebody, like personal. Yeah. Not so much like uh, the environment that she was in. You know, she's not in Afghanistan. But I did hear that. And I'm upset. But I did hear something else. Um, and just because I want to give a shout out to one million moms for gun control. How cool is that? Come on. One million moms? Okay. Uh-huh. Anyway, <laughs> you're like, whatever. <laughs> no, I was confused. I just think that moms like do so much, you know, they yeah. care about their kids. Yes. So apparently, you know, they did a march thousands of them um, against gun control in Washington, D.C. And this was also with the Washington National Cathedral and other several churches. So this is like churches and moms taking a stand for like our babies. You know who else is there? The Newton parents from Newton, Connecticut. Right, right, right. They carry signs that said gun control now and we are Sandy Hook and what would Jesus pack? Whoa. <laughs> Jesus would have a. I, why would Jesus have a gun? <laughs> exactly. Lots of weed. Lots and lots of weed. <laughs> have some Saudis, guys. That's a, that's a cool sign. Who watched the inauguration? We talked about Beyonce singing, but who watched the inauguration? Uh, I watched parts of it because I was working. Yeah, partially. Sorry. Yeah, we. I, I think Danielle and I and Selena watched parts of it as well because we were like burning keyboards down, <laughs> live tweeting, posting articles. But like, 
I, what did you guys think about Obama's speech? Was what, in my opinion, was super progressive, liberal. Like mm-hmm. I'm not working liberal. no more. This is what we're going to do: same sex marriage, equal yes. for women. He was very blatant about That's the good. stuff that he was talking it's about, about. Time, yeah, it is about time because he's. Well, in my opinion, he kind of beats around the bush. A lot. Hello, a lot. He's Hello, always like, um, uh, like, you know, he's always beating around the bush. Yeah. So he was kind of very, he was very direct. So, like, it was nice to hear. And it was nice to see. But a- absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I did. I thought it, 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 it was a good speech. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, 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 got, I didn't like the whole line, like, mothers, sisters, and comrades. I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah, he so always like, gets like. Like, you don't, we don't talk like that about men. We don't, <laughs> we, no women gets in front of a stage and makes a speech, my brothers and fathers and sons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds really awkward, actually. He's so when, when women hear it. He gets cheesy. He gets it. Yeah. We're, we're like, like, he thinks literally. that he has to, like, <laughs> you guys connect think it's cheesy. personally. We think it's cheesy, but you know what? Actually, there's a technique. It is cheesy. Because, you know, I study campaign organizing, and mm-hmm. I want to be, like, a, you know, a chief of staff or something like that one yes. day. I want to run for office, too. Good for you. But, like, in the speeches, there are certain keywords, buzzwords, just like on the internet. If you put a certain word in, mm-hmm. you know, you, and you put it on your website, like, more people will see your website because of that oh, word. Yeah. There are certain words you can say, like, army, fight. That tyranny. will reach to certain That'll people? Re- yeah. So, like, words like that, believe it or not, like, it reaches, it's more, it makes the speech more appealing to females. When he when he mentioned mothers, uh, yeah, you remember, what's I her guess. name? Anne Romney. I love you women. Yeah. And we were all, like. Dude, Why does he have back to say off, the end of it? Back off. But it just seems like <laughs> it just seems like you're trying too hard. It's hard yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, all right, Obama. We I get it. Yeah. We, the first like, yeah, four like, times you said it. <laughs> I think we can see Obama, uh, you know, we can uh, we can discuss his foreign policy. I definitely do not agree a lot with his foreign policy. But I think I think we established that he is pro woman. Yes. You don't have to remind yeah. what do I say it like that, man. Speaking of his foreign policy, the United Nations is putting the U.S. under investigation for their drones, their drone strikes. That is this right. This is some real-ish right here. I'm excited about that. I think if we, as a nation, weren't so Islamophobic or, you know, and I don't say individually, but I think as a nation, we definitely are. <laughs> you know, we, we definitely have this fear of, like, those people. Yeah. When we see it of, like, oh, the enemy, the terrorists. Mm-hmm. And we definitely paint them that much. And, 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 and I always say we because we are. As a nation, we really are. Even though individually, you know, us here, you know, we might have different levels of how we feel that the Middle East is a threat. But, you know, I don't we're not let's, Islamophobic. Let's not act like it didn't have a lot to do with, you know, what happened on 9-11. Yeah, I'm it not had everything. It had absolutely everything. Yeah, I'm not either. justifying it, but I think what I think the biggest reason it's happened is because, A, we've never been attacked on that level before. Pearl Harbor was the closest thing, and that happened all the way in Hawaii before Hawaii was yeah. really Hawaii. Yeah. And <laughs> it was Hawaii. It was, yeah. it was ha- <laughs> Hawaii. It was Hawaii, but it wasn't Hawaii. No, but no. And that <laughs> was never <laughs> like that. And <laughs> people became like horrible. <laughs> and then the administration and, like, you know, their, and, their, and their attempts to want to do whatever they needed to do, whatever mm-hmm. they wanted to do they to pursue this, they pandered and they had to create an enemy. They had to put a face to it. And unfortunately, you had those people mm-hmm. who, you know, sometimes they get too extreme and they focus on just one thing and that's what happened. I think, and then yeah. every time you turn around, I don't hear about Norway wanting to fight us or Norway blowing up our cars. But when I watch the news, I see in you Israel, missed that, Israel huh? I see in like, you know, in Iraq that they killed three Americans in Afghanistan. They sawed off a reporter's head. Benghazi. So, yeah, in Benghazi, like things <laughs> yeah, like that. I, so. mean, if, I mean, you know, the media definitely needs to, plays a huge needs to put part, that, though. You know, and then the way I see it, I think if we, we get away from like, oh, these people are just bad people and we really look at what these drone attacks But that's do, the thing, too. We would be really concerned. The media further <laughs> perpetuates that idea that, you know, those are the people that yeah. we should... You know that who are the enemy? Who's the big bad wolf? So we, we have a show on drones, remember? And I talk all these statistics, and I learned a lot. And a lot of times, you know what, what struck me the most is if you didn't listen to that show and you don't want to go back to listen to it, I'll tell you right now. A lot of the things that the U.S. does is they don't really have a good mechanisms to decide who is a military, who is you know dangerous to the U.S. and who isn't. They kind of just hover around. They look, and it's like if you look suspicious from the air, like you're hovering, mm-hmm. then they can kind of attack like on demand. I I think that's a little loosely he based. I, I, they do have like certain confirmations that have to come through first. Very few though. But they like they do. It's not just like oh that may look like stealing. Let's blow this entire block up. But that's but why many they have funerals and certain. weddings have been attacked. Yeah, because they look suspicious. Yeah, but like they have like there is a computer system and the computer system is flawed. But Karina, I thought you were gonna say something. Oh, as so. a person, I, I, <laughs> it's gone. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it, 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 it loss, is. A I lost person. my vision, guys, and I have glasses now. <laughs> I lost my vision. Oh, I feel like an old man. Where did you leave it on her bed? <laughs> I, I don't know, but I, I need glasses. Now, I'm far-sighted, which I don't know what that means, apparently, besides me. Then you can't see things near you? 
No, that's near sighted, isn't it? No, no I think it's the opposite. When, you, in, when well. you can only see things near you. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, wow, man. So that, yeah, that kind of stinks. I feel like an old man. I'm wearing glasses now. I feel like, um, what Jack, um, what's Jackie Brown? What was that show in the late 80s, early 90s? I, I don't remember the late what 80s or early 90s. 90s. Yeah. <laughs> I was living in Dominican Republic, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't remember Good nothing but Salvador Gigante. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have a TV in DR. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm serious. <laughs> I want to ask you guys a question. You don't. You can answer. You don't have to answer if you don't want mm-hmm. to. But raise your hand if you've ever smoked weed. Now. We're on the radio. Why are you asking me? Raise, raise your, your hand. hand. <laughs> <laughs> Just say I'm yes or no. Say yes or no if you ever smoked weed before. I yeah. smoke weed. Yeah, I have in the past and yeah. thought it was the devil. You thought you thought it was the devil. I just got really Absolutely. hungry. Were you there at Westbury when like these girls had their weed weed lace? And university police sent out an email that said, "Don't buy weed from a strange drug dealer. Only buy it from your trusted drug dealer." No, <laughs> what? <laughs> Shut not. the hell up. Proof or it didn't happen. There was someone putting <laughs> exactly there was proof or it didn't happen. <laughs> yes, there was someone putting that. PCP in like people's weed. And I, I was an wow. RA on duty, and there was these some students who like they had PCP lace in their weed, and they were bugging the heck out. Oh my I goodness. do not recall. I know. I think that. That's why I actually would I, am for legalizing it. But I think when you legalize it, then you have agencies that control it. And then you don't have like, you know, kind of like what used to happen with meat. And nobody used to okay. recognize it. We didn't have the FDA. So you can kind of so put, put anything in there. In there. Yeah. yeah, just to fillers. Feces, whatever. You can do fillers. <laughs> and that's what happens mm-hmm. with the drug industry because it's illegal and nobody regulates it. When something's illegal, nobody regulates it. And, and that brings me back to the, even the abortion debate. When it's illegal, nobody regulates it. So it unsafe. Be, it becomes things. unsafe. It becomes dangerous. And that's, a, that's the case for so many things. I mean, that's the mm-hmm. case for drinking. When we talk about you know uh, when when drinking when alcohol was illegal in prohibition era it was like the worst and people made moonshine in their basements yeah. and then like people got these like problems they died their legs became atrophied it, it was horrible seriously people should reconsider how legalizing something would really I, make I it better I think what the argument is is that once you start with weed you're going to continue on to, to harder um, drugs that's like, like gateway the drugs. yeah that's like the why there are people against it? I think it, cigarettes I are a gateway drug to marijuana. It's, um, I'll say that for okay. later. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll well, say that for later. Hey, I'm just trying to use the logic, but you'll be, we're going to take a short break, actually. We'll be right back on Let Your Voice Be Heard, and then Stanley is going to be talking about marijuana. Marijuana. Everybody knows she wants you for your ride. Back on Let Your Voice Be Heard on 90.3 FM WHCR. Did I mention that we're the voice of Harlem? Speaking of the voice of Harlem, that was Brittany Campbell, and she was singing Call Me Baby. Patty hit me. Yeah, <laughs> that was Brittany Campbell, and the song Call Me Baby. And I don't know, I'm starting to like it. Like, I start singing it, and I forget. I'm like, who is that person? So I, I, she deserves to get a record deal. What do you think, Karina? I think so, too. I think it was a cute little catchy it's, it's catchy yeah. that's what it is i don't even uh, it's not to me sometimes it's not about, it, about i love the song it's about maybe i'm catchy. singing it in the shower <laughs> yeah. yeah unconsciously or right. subconsciously. so so i i left off <laughs> and then i made this incendiary statement and you guys looked at me like wow i said i think cigarettes are a gateway drug to marijuana because if we think marijuana is a gateway drug to cocaine why the, isn't the Cocaine's opposite true? The Why isn't the opposite true? I mean, hey, you're smoking it already. You have the same kind of like so it's a pipe or or a blunt. It's the mm-hmm. same. I don't know. I think it's the same. 
that's a conversation I'm kind of going to jump into, and I'm really excited to have this conversation. I've tried to have this um this conversation a couple of times, but it wasn't the right time. But I guess today is the right time. Do you smoke weed? Because you got weed smokers here. No. <laughs> um, I've I've never when I played basketball, I didn't want to smoke because I didn't want to mess up my lungs because I thought I was NBA material. Uh-huh. No one else in the world did. Okay. Um, <laughs> So that didn't work out, and then I just never had an interest for it. I tried smoking it before. Um, it's okay, I guess, but it's just, yeah. I buy a little whiskey. No, I yeah, me too. I have to say, really, I actually don't don't have an interest for it, but I definitely tried it out of curiosity in a legal setting. I was in Amsterdam; it was legal people, <laughs> so I haven't definitely done it here because I'm afraid. Actually, to be honest with you, I don't want to break the law. It scares oh, me. Hell no. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to get arrested and have that on my record, which is kind of sad. But uh, hey, I, I didn't. I didn't see the fuss over it. I just was really it's not that serious. I came yeah. out of this like place and then I just went across the street to a steakhouse <laughs> and I ate so much food. <laughs> I got, <laughs> <laughs> you got I the really munchies, huh? I no. did. But marijuana is it's, it's become such a controversial topic um, in American you know politics because of the huge push to now have it legalized. No, so you, many people do it. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. In New York, especially. Um, now, like, unless you have enough to distribute, they're not going to arrest you for it. You're probably, you're probably just going to throw it away. Most of the people that I know smoke mm-hmm. weed. And there used to be this stigma before that, you know, only people who were down in the dumps who weren't doing anything with their lives smoke weed. But I that know people who are professionals, who are lawyers, who are doctors, who are mothers. social workers, mothers, politicians, fathers. Kids. <laughs> yeah, lots, oh, of not kids. kids. Lots, and lots of kids. And well, well, teens. Yeah, teens. Well, I hope. I hope. <laughs> well, but, I'm not advocating for drugs. Let me just shut up. So that's <laughs> that they smoke weed. And I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. I think it's, you know, that's up to the individual to, to decide. But they're functioning humans. They're yeah, supposedly it doesn't have negative uh, health effects. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that's what I saw in some I of my research. But like, it's weird, but you know, that's why we're here having this conversation today because we're going to be talking about the legalization of marijuana and whether it should happen, if it should happen, why it should happen, if it should not happen, why not? And I'm very excited because we have our guest on the show today. His name is John Walker. He is a senior policy analyst at Fire. Excuse me, Fire Dog Lake, which launched the Just Say Now We campaign. So, Just Say Now campaign is a campaign for marijuana legalization made of transpartisan alliance of organizations seeking to improve our nation's drug laws. Their mission is to be a group of all individuals of all ages, backgrounds, and political leanings that share the simple conviction that marijuana prohibition must end. So, John Walker, thank you so much for coming onto the show and say your hellos. Oh, thanks for having me on. No problem, no problem. So, John, before we begin, i got to ask you, what is your favorite color? Because it has nothing to do with the segment. <laughs> uh, I would probably say blue. I, was, I thought you were going to say green. I went to the website, and it was green, what? and I was like, yeah. No, blue like the sky. Come on. Because you're high. And the ocean. Oh, oh, the ocean, no. I thought blue like the sky Like the sky because you're high? Oh, my goodness. John, don't, 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 don't worry about me. I'm a nerd, okay? <laughs> I make attempts to be funny, and it's like, very painful and awkward. That's how I got my girlfriend. <laughs> she, she dated me, so I would shut up. Um, <laughs> So... Anyways, you know, we're going to get on the conversation and we're talking about the legalization of marijuana. But before we get to that, please tell me a little bit more about your organization and the campaign in particular. What have you guys been doing in your campaign to kind of like push, you know, make weed legal today? Hey, well, the organization Fire Dog Lake, we're one of the largest progressive blogs. Um, and we started the Just Say Now campaign back in 2010. And we noticed that there's very little energy amongst either, you know, the political activists or politicians behind this issue, even though the American people's opinions of it were changing dramatically. If you looked at the polling, there's been like a 20% growth in the number of people who, or the number of people who think marijuana should be legal increased, you know, from like 20% to like 50% in only like two decades. And so we thought it was a time, this is a really important issue, you know, it's not just, you know, about personal freedom it's a big, you know, civil rights issue. Most of the people who are arrested for marijuana tend to be minorities. You know, rich white people almost never get arrested, even though they're more likely to use marijuana. So there's a whole host of issues for why it should be legal. And we launched the campaign because we didn't feel like there's enough sort of politically driven people in the space to really be pushing this conversation forward. And in that time, it seems to have really exploded, especially with the passage of the uh, legalization in Colorado and Washington. Speaking of exploding, there's been explosive debate about marijuana. Was, oh, that, was that corny? Yeah, it was, <laughs> marijuana doesn't explode. No, no. Um, but there has been Smoking. a huge debate about legalizing marijuana. And just to kick it right off, there's been this huge push to say that the reason it shouldn't be legal is because it is so harmful. One blunt of marijuana, which is just one cigarette 
of marijuana, I guess you could say, for those of you who don't understand the lingo, like me, oh, is right. as bad right. as smoking five cigarettes. That's what I, I read that in a study late last night when I was prepping for this. And I want to know, like, you know, if it's that bad, why should we be legalizing it? Well, those studies look at the actual chemical content as opposed to the effects of long-term smoking. Most of the research that shows actual marijuana smokers finds very little correlation with cancer or lung problems. Especially these people just tend to smoke way less marijuana than you would cigarettes, you know. A heavy cigarette smoker would be smoking maybe two packs a day. Heavy marijuana smokers, you know, may be smoking the equivalent of like, one, you know, two or three joints a day for the most part. So the actual health impacts of it are pretty minor. And that's sort of one of the reasons that the push for legalization has become so popular is people realize, you know, most things that are legal, whether it's alcohol or even bacon, are probably more dangerous for you than marijuana. <laughs> bacon. 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 bacon, 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 bacon. Don't you dare talk badly about bacon, John, okay? Because listen, <laughs> I'll have diabetes, the arteries, though. but I will love my bacon forever, all right? <laughs> um, so there are some health effects to marijuana use then, correct? There, there are some. They're, they're relatively minor considering, you know, you know, compared to cigarettes or alcohol or even, you know, uh, you know, saturated fats or something, you know. There is a few studies that show people who start smoking young and smoke a lot of marijuana have a slight reduction in IQ, and this study is a little controversial, but, you know, there's a few indications that uh, it would, you know, mess with short-term memory while you're smoking, but if you stop smoking, your short-term memory will improve um, after only like a month or so. You know, it can do a little damage to the lungs if you smoke a large quantity over a very long time, but... This is really minor compared to, um, you know, most things. Hey, John, um, I'm Patricia here, and, you know, I, I don't know exa- exactly what my position is on whether we should legalize it or not, but I definitely traveled to Amsterdam, and I wanted to try it, so I did. And I felt that afterward, I was just very lazy. I got, uh, and, I, and I did very little bit of it because I'm not, I'm not a smoker. I can't even be around cigarette smoke or I, I don't enjoy any. So I did very little bit of it. And um, very shortly after, I felt lazy. I was tired. I was a little sluggish, giggly, but sluggish. And I just felt like if we legalize marijuana and then we have people because they can do it like on their lunch break, I mean, could that have a potential effect of really, really like well, well, a productivity people. level, for example, at work? Well, nobody lets you, most people are not allowing you to drink at lunch break. You know, drinking mm-hmm. alcohol is going to make you lazy and tired and all those things. You know, your boss isn't going to let you come back from your lunch break all drunk. You know, it's the same thing with marijuana. Like, you know, you shouldn't be smoking it at your job. You know, this is something the individuals who are adults want to do something on their free time. They should have the freedom to do this. Very well, you know, the, the, I do sometimes do lunchtime margaritas, I won't <laughs> lie. And you're right. I agree with him, and I think that um, people... People react differently to it. There are some people who say that they're most productive when when they're high. Really? Yeah. Like creatively? Yeah, yeah, creatively. Ah. Like they think better or they can brainstorm more effectively when they're high. The the one time I got high, the stripes on my cardigan were falling off. That was stupid. (laughs) (laughs) That was not marijuana, dude. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And I think uh, that's what everything, like if you, everything in excess is bad. Mm -hmm. So if you drink too much alcohol, obviously it's bad. If you eat too much food, you're going to get fat. Like, it's just yeah. everything in excess is bad. So I don't think there's a problem with legalizing marijuana. So, so John, I mean, we keep talking about it. We, we've, we seem to feel that, okay, right. I mean, that's a personal responsibility to not do it to the point where you become, like, you, you know, you can't function. So why? So what's the stigma? Why, why, we don't have, why won't, don't we have that stigma against cigarette or, or drinking? But we have a mar- about marijuana. Like, does this start at some time? Was it always this way? Um, well, it started, you know. Most drug laws in our country, and if you look at the history of almost all of them, has their origins in racism. Um, you know, the first opium laws were about, you know, suppressing the Chinese population in California. The first marijuana laws were about going after, you know, your jazz musicians and your Hispanics. That's even why they called it marijuana. You know, in America, it was always known as cannabis. That was, you know, always the English term for it, and they specifically called it marijuana to make it sound foreign and Mexican when they uh, first banned marijuana. Um, And so that, you know, that is a big origin of how the drug war started, and that has remained a big part of the drug war to this day. You know, the number one people groups being arrested are still minorities, young black men and Hispanic men. That's a bad idea because marijuana sounds exotic, and I love exotic things. (laughs) 
<laughs> so they really messed up with that one. John, I want to change gears for a little bit and just and talk about cannabis in its pure form. I once heard this, and this from a pothead friend of mine, so it could be wrong, but I, I once heard that the lumber industry had a big push to make marijuana illegal because of the plant itself has so many uses. Is that true? And if so, what uses are those, if you know of any? Well, that, uh, you know, marijuana was industrial hemp, and, you know, the word cannabis, you know, canvas, that comes from cannabis, you know. Basically, everything that was fiber-based about 150 years ago was made from hemp. So, you know, like the, the paper that they did the original draft of, you know, conspiracy and decoration, you know, your, your script draft paper was all made out of hemp. Um, you know, your covered wagons, those, that was hemp. You know, your sail ships and all the cordage that made, like, the United States a big trade in whaling, that was all hemp. So hemp does have a lot of uses. It's been replaced by some other fibers. Uh, since then, but there's still a decent amount of industrial hemp growing around the world, just not in the United States, because for whatever weird reason, you know, our law still treats industrial hemp, which has basically no THC in it, the same as marijuana. Um, so it's still not growing in the United States, but it's grown a lot in China and a few other countries. Oh, okay, so if we legalize marijuana, this would be another substance that we can use and replace for, like, you know, to, I guess, save resources, you're saying? Yeah, you know, it's... There's a lot of... <laughs> There are other fibers which have replaced some of its uses, so it's not like the biggest industrial product, but, you know, thousands upon thousands of acres of it are grown around the world. And if we did legalize marijuana fully in this country, industrial hemp would also fall. And it would you know, be useful to farmers to have another crop to add to the rotation. It's really good for the soil. Um, it grows really good in certain environments. Hmm. You know, we used to have, you know, during World War II, because we lost our access to um, cordage from the Philippines, uh, we encourage all the farmers all over the country to grow hemp. Oh, whoa. Okay, whoa. Well, John, that's some really interesting information. I want to continue with this conversation, but we got to go on a quick break. So, John, hold on for a second. And if you're listening, we'll be right back after this quick break, guys. Make sure you call in with your questions, 212-650-6903. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard, and we are high on conversation. Oh, really geez. corny. <laughs> Man Up in Harlem is a by men for men ministry that focuses on creating positive changes in the Harlem community through prayer and community service. The group hosts a Men's Empowerment Hour every Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the Polo Grounds Housing Community Room and a weekly prayer walk every Thursday morning in several locations. At the prayer walk, members pray together in a football-style huddle about community issues. Man Up in Harlem's slogan is Don't Talk About It, Be About It. If you'd like to join a prayer walk, meet at 6 a.m. at the 155th subway station for the Polo Grounds House Walk or at the Dunkin' Donuts at 126 in Amsterdam for the Grand House Walk. For more information, please check out www.manupharlem.org. Listening to Let Your Voice Be Heard. Today, this is a topic. Let's talk about sex. How do we handle this issue? There are a lot more risky behaviors than drinking or drug use that affect sexual activity. In my little community, the police officers make more than 10 to talk to people. They're going to be people who just don't like the cops. So when we have our guns, then, you know, what's the solution? Do you welcome homosexuals in your church, Pastor? I'm never going to treat you differently. Never going to put you down. I'm going to say this to you, though. I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> They're not stripping or searching or frisking me. Let your voice be heard radio. Every Sunday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. I love that promo, and we are back on. I have one her. line in that promo, and that's let's talk about sex. You have got to edit that. I am not. Is that the that best thing I've ever said on I'll this show? I'll cut you off completely and put sex. <laughs> I think it was a good promo, <laughs> nice and controversial. It was good. I said that all I say is let's talk about sex. I see what you mean. I, you know what, Stan? Yeah, 
Don't let know how to have what, what, what are you twerking to, Danielle? <laughs> oh, she's uh, singing. She's, <laughs> our intern is talking about sex and dancing to uh, let's talk about sex. That's what you're supposed to do when you talk about sex. You're supposed to cat daddy. So I guess my uh, one line inspires people, whatever. Yes, it empowers everyone. Um, real quick, guys, I want to give a personal shout out to Kwanzaa Billy, who could not make it this week. She is our bid- business administrator person, and you see, it's not awkward because Selena's not saying it. She's our business. That's what it is. But we miss you, Selena. <laughs> we miss you, Kwanzaa. And if you just tuned in, we are talking about the legalization of marijuana, or maybe not. And we have Mr. John Walker on the phone, who has been giving us some very interesting information, including one in which during World, World War II, farmers were encouraged to grow cannabis. So, John, we have you back on air, and here we go. So, next question I want to go. I want to go to you know, marijuana has been illegal all this time, but we have all these illegal underground you know channels where people can sell and distribute it and make money off of it. And how you, you know you want to legalize marijuana, but that's not going to stop the underground trafficking of it. And more than likely, with the regulations and the taxes, it'd be more expensive to buy it legally than it would be you know from Saquon who on one forty fifth who would just give it to me for five dollars. So what's what's the allure? Why even bother? No, no, I think if you look at the history of, say, alcohol prohibition, um, when we legalize alcohol after prohibition, there's still, you know, there's still some moonshiners, there's still some people who illegally sell alcohol, but they, they represent maybe only about 1% of the market. Most people don't like dealing with criminals. You know, most people like going to a store, getting a known product, one they know is tested, one that they know they could sue the producer of, you know, if something mm-hmm. was wrong with it. Right. Um, you know, I think the vast majority of people in this, you know, if you look at certain states where they've approved medical marijuana, you know, most of the people who use marijuana, you know, in the one level ones like California, they tend to get it from legitimate, you know, at least quasi-legitimate uh, dispensaries. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't think most people would want to visit a criminal. I know I don't like going to criminals. I don't like hanging out with, you know, sketchy people. <laughs> yeah. I would yeah. much rather just go to my corner store. Yeah, boy, that's so awesome. <laughs> I can get a Philly cheese stick sandwich, a ginger ale, and a dime bag from the corner store. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, really quickly, because we have a call on air. His name is Austin, and he has a comment. Austin, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Um, as a avid weed smoker, I guess you could say, I, I see no problems with weed being legalized. It's just like like alcohol. It's all about moderation. Like I could go to the gym. I could smoke and then go to the gym and be productive. Like as a as a weed smoker. So people are saying it's like it's just as dangerous as alcohol or even more dangerous than alcohol is completely clearly false. Weed is harmless in my opinion. Austin, you know, people like people it's people like you that John needs to hear for needs to hear from. And make sure you go to his website, he'll announce it at the end of the segment so that you know you can join a campaign that helps to legalize marijuana. Am I right, John? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, what John was talking about earlier, I, we were talking about during the break, even before we started the segment, which was about when you make things legal. I, I, for me, it's not so much about whether I like marijuana or I want to smoke it myself. I just feel that um, when you make things legal, then you have an avenue to make sure that it is safe. I mean, we talk about the meat industry and how it, people used to put fillers mm-hmm. in there just to make it look like it was more meat. And in reality, it was like rats because and there were no whatever dead yeah. things you find in the street and that's why i love bacon and now we <laughs> that's not the same but now we you know we have the fda we, we just have a lot of avenues to make sure that it is safe and i feel like we need to do that for marijuana so instead of talking about oh it's going to kill people it's so dangerous you're going to get hooked on it you know it's a gateway drug to i don't know what we can just say like why don't you make it safe so that it's as you know good to use as whatever it is i mean i, I don't even get it because we we allow cigarettes so i'm yeah, still just cigarettes are worse. Wait, i'm gonna yeah. jump in on that actually i'm sorry patty Go ahead, uh, no right away john patricia said something very interesting gateway drug marijuana has been linked to being a gateway drug for several drugs including cocaine heroin of some mm-hmm. sorts and now molly's and ecstasy's pop molly i'm sweating <laughs> so can you <laughs> Wow. You guys right. mean how that Karina what can in spirits. we I felt that. But yeah. sorry, John. <laughs> gateway drugs, marijuana. Well, <laughs> there's a few things. If you actually believe the gateway drug theory, the number one gateway drug is alcohol. Most people the first drug they use is alcohol. That's the first intoxicant they'll ever use. So if you're if you're really concerned about gateway, you need to ban alcohol. Now, the fact that you know, marijuana's quote-unquote gateway has relatively been disproven for the most part. People, you know, the only way it really serves as a gateway, and this is a great argument for legalization, is that if you go to a marijuana dealer, they might also be a dealer for another illegal substance and try to sell that to you. 
that's the only real way that marijuana is actually a gateway. You know, if it was legalized and it was in a store, you would never come in contact with these people. And this is interesting. If you look at a place like Amsterdam, they got way lower use rates of cocaine because they do not have the same black market infrastructure you do and the same sort of street dealers you do because, you know, the number one drug people buy is marijuana. And if you remove that from the criminal enterprise, you dramatically shrink the black market in the gang activity and the criminal activity. Well, you know, that's a very good point. But we had a doctor, we had some, we had a guest on here a couple of um, months ago, which um, our good friend Dustin, they had a huge debate over something the doctor said. The doctor said that, honestly, it's not necessarily the drug that makes people go bad. It's the person within itself, whether it's mental, personal issues Mm -hmm. that affect that, like, that kind of like, you know, maximize the impact of the drug. And he said that, you know, realistically, you could have someone who does cocaine or crack or heroin and, and still be a fully functioning human being. And with that argument and your argument for marijuana, why not just legalize all drugs? Well, there is, there is an argument to legalize all drugs, and that, that has been made by some people. And then there's the question of what is your goal with prohibition? Because as the ability to stop people from using drugs, it has, it has failed pretty miserably. The United States has one of the highest uses of marijuana even though we have some of the toughest marijuana laws in the Western world. Uh, I know places like Portugal have done a good job of basically decriminalizing all drugs. And so, you know, what they do by doing that is they try to reduce the market by not having them, you know, sold. But if you're using drugs, instead of arresting you, giving you a criminal record, sort of ruining your life, not, you know, discouraging you, they use certain forms of treatment, forms of access to counseling. And they've done a much better job at controlling this public health problem of abuse. Okay, I mean that's that's a good that's a good concept. I I can assume, but what about the, the, is it effective? Uh, in Portugal, yeah, they have lower use rates than most drugs in the United States does. Really? Yeah, you know we have to remember that the issue of drug abuse has always been in society. You know, the biggest drug abuse is alcohol. And it's one of the most dangerous drugs to abuse. It kills you know thousands and thousands of people a year causes all sorts of domestic violence issues and all sorts of stuff. We haven't gotten rid of this issue. And criminalizing activity and locking people up and, you know, giving them a felony record is not going to make them, that's not going to help them. You know, someone's an act or something. Someone's got an actual medical problem with addiction. Making them a felon is not going to make their life easier and make it better for them to try to get help. Okay, I mean, and, and that, that, that theory within itself makes sense. You know, and I, I understand where you're coming from, but there's still, but th- there seems to be like a little bit of an agenda in your in your comment that you made. So I want to kind of like, you know, if I'm correct, I want to call you out. And if I'm not, you know, my bad. But it sounds like you're almost insinuating that alcohol is worse than marijuana. Oh, alcohol, I think quite arguably, is a more dangerous drug than marijuana. I think there's little scientific dispute at that point. Really? You, know, you, you can easily drink yourself to death. And we have... I don't remember the exact number, but, you know, I think easily over 10,000, like, you know, alcohol overdoses. No one overdoses on marijuana. It's effectively impossible. Hmm. Um, and so just like a pure toxicity level, it's well known that alcohol is more dangerous than marijuana. You know, when it comes to long-term stuff, you know, liver cirrhosis, you know, heart conditions, alcohol is a very dangerous thing to use. All right, well, hmm. I mean... You got to say, Patricia? No, I mean, I, I think I just, what, what I was nodding to was the same thing, that I I think that we have the stigma against marijuana, and it's not necessarily tied to it being dangerous for anybody. Now, you know, what, what Stanley was asking you earlier, you know, why, the way I see it is, okay, we legalize marijuana because it's not dangerous, but can we say the same thing for heroin? Um, I mean, what, what is your, I mean, do you think that we should just legalize it all? And then that we can control it, or should it be there be a way that we, we stop it? I don't know. I mean, even with alcohol, it's legal. But I mean, I'm assuming that if something is too dangerous, uh, we wouldn't have it out in the market. Is that would that be the same case in with the drug industry? Oh well, you know, everything should be dealt with to maximize the best public health situation for the country. And I think there's a very good argument that marijuana because it is safe, um, relatively so. Um, you know, prohibition has failed at stopping people from using it. The full legalization of marijuana is a very smart move. When it comes to certain other drugs, you know, I think, once again, you have to look at the data in the public health policy. I would say I'm strongly for the decriminalization of it. We shouldn't be making criminals out of people who are using or have problems with substance abuse. And then I think it should be a case-by-case basis. I mean, you know, it should be like anything else in public policy. There's, you know, 
positive developments, there's negative developments, there's trade-offs you have to make. But our current system has just been a dismal failure. You know, we have some of the highest drug rates in this country. We got the largest prison population in this country. We spend an absurd amount, and we fuel a horribly destructive uh, drug war with our money that's killed, you know, 50,000 uh, people in Mexico in just the last few years. <sighs> <laughs> you win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't that think it was a debate. I think no, it, was I it wasn't a debate, but I mean, he sold me. No, he won. He, he really has. Oh, yes, he okay, has wait. Yeah. First but, of all, that wasn't that hard to sell us on whether marijuana should be legal. But, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're right about that. But John, um, really quickly, because I think we've pretty much gotten to the point of what we wanted to do. Um, I think we've very much heard your side, and I think you know, at least in this studio, you have us sold. You know, I'm, I'm, I can officially say that I think marijuana should be legalized. And now, what I want to do because it's not legal, and I know so many people who smoke marijuana, and so mm -hmm. I know some people who sell marijuana, unfortunately. Yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So what can they do? Because they're listening right now. Trust me. They're listening. They're probably smoking while they're listening, oh, too. Oh, stop. Come on, let's be real. So, you know, what can they do? Let them know how to get in contact with your organization. How can they join in? Help and the cause. Help the cause. Hopefully not high when they're helping the cause, because they may not be much help. So how, what can they do? Uh, you can go to Just Say Now. That's, that's the website for the thing. Um, you can also go to our Facebook page, uh, Just Say Now, Legalized Marijuana. That's the Facebook page handle we got there. You can sign up. Um, how you can get involved really depends in each and every state. Um, I know in several states there's going to be ballot initiative campaigns in the next few years. I think there's going to probably be one in Massachusetts and Maine and probably California and Oregon in 2014. So you can volunteer to help gather signatures for those, donate money for those. Um, if you live in states that don't have um, ballot signature things, you know, you can contact your legislatures. Uh, this issue is changing rapidly. Politicians tend to be a lot older from a different generation. You know, hearing from constituents that this is an issue they care about. Um, you know, find out there's bills in your state that have come up, not just for legalization, but maybe decriminalization or medical marijuana. You know, call them. That has a real impact on a lot of these legislatures. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so, John, thank you so much for calling in today. We had a great discussion with you. And, you know, for all of you guys listening out there, you have the information, make sure you hit him up. We're going to go on a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to have some more discussion within the team about marijuana legalization. And you can call in or tweet and give your opinion. I was gonna clean my room until I got high <laughs> I was gonna get up and find the broom, but then I got high uh, My room is still messed up, and I know why Why, man? Yeah, cause I got high, because I got high, because I got high la da 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 I was gonna go to class before I got high Come on, y'all Check it out I could have cheated and I could have passed, but I got high. Uh, uh, la -da, da, I'm taking it next semester and I know why. Why, man? Why? Yeah, hey, cause I got high. Because I got high. Because I got high. Go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. Uh, I was gonna go to court before I got high. Ooh, I was gonna pay my child support. But then I got high. No, you wasn't. Uh, yeah. La da, they took my whole paycheck, <laughs> and I know why. Why, man? Yeah, hey. Don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> or do it and have fun. <laughs> because you got high. We're back on Let Your Voice Be Heard on 90.3 FM WHCR. And we just finished having a very informative conversation about marijuana legalization. You were informed. We educated you. But we want you to be empowered. If you think marijuana should be legalized, make sure you join the Just Say Now campaign. You can make sure you go to their website and visit them, check them out, learn all you can, and make a difference for something you care about. I don't smoke weed. Honestly, um, it's not something that I want to do or that I care <laughs> to do. Nobody asking you. Um, <laughs> okay. You know, I don't think, you know, but there are people who do it. And as far as I can see and as far as John has convinced me pretty soundly, it's not it's not as bad as some other things that are legal, like, you know, cigarettes. binge drinking and cigarettes, which kill more people than anything else. It really? Is. So, yeah. I mean, cancer is so legal. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, the. the that that you were talking about, and it's so the point that I keep saying, I'm like, I don't really feel particularly strong about taking a stand on like whether I think marijuana is good or bad. But I think I, I'm always for the stance that when you make something legal, it is better. And 
actually during the break and <laughs> Stanley's like oh you know let's continue this discussion because it's so good about you know marijuana and I was like can we talk about abortion and he just like started laughing but it almost like if it's it, like what I keep saying brings us to say that when you make things legal you make them safe and that goes for both things that we discussed today yeah. wasn't that kind of like that the whole true. yeah it, 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 I mean it, it, whether it, you agree with it or not that was the whole thing I mean whether you agree with it or not whether you agree that something is morally right mm-hmm. or wrong and is that about marijuana drugs alcohol cigarettes or abortion then the question is when you make it legal, you make it more likely that people will do it less and safer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one for. I mean, there's there's so many things that people our age don't seem to care about. In, in oh, my that's perception. not true. No, I agree. In my perception, they just don't seem to care about. This is not one of them. Mm-mm. Marijuana, like I know, um, maybe it's just the friends that I had. They smoke weed and they are very functional. I know some pretty successful people in their career fields or about to be successful when they finish for college, and they smoke marijuana. They use it. And they're, they're fully functioning and they're very passionate about this. And it's been proven that it's not an unhealthy thing. So, you know, let's let's make it happen. <laughs> let's make it happen. You, are, you, are you saying that like you with her is going to take the stand to no. legalize marijuana? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going to. Selena, Bush, Selena I need Selena to be here. I just want to know what yes. she's yeah, going to say. Yeah, I want to know what she has to say about Oh, my it. God, Stanley. So she's probably hyperventilating. I'm not saying, you know, that I'm going to smoke marijuana or that I, I think people should smoke marijuana. But I don't know if they the, from what I've heard, the argument doesn't seem to be strong enough that it should be illegal. And I, I do agree. think that the people who are passionate about it, it don't just sit back and complain. This is your opportunity. Take a stance. Yeah, you found a venue that would ha- can help you push for something that you want. And I think what you know, one of the things that we want to do in this show is empower people mm-hmm. to be active because a lot of times we're frustrated about things, but we don't know what we can do. That was your venue right there. As far as as far as abortion rights goes, because I want to kind of like backtrack on yeah. that a little bit. Um, whether you're pro-life or you're pro-choice, there are venues you can go to. There, there, are, there are platforms for you to speak on. And mm-hmm. more so than anything, you can you you shouldn't be afraid to just open your mouth and say. Say what you think because it's appreciated and it's one in my correct. It is right. no, I mean, th- which is why I wanted to have that discussion today with two different people, um, and and I want to say that I don't actually approve necessarily with one side or the other. You know, I I am pro-choice, but I also think you know with the with the whole organization Catholics for Choice, like. Why don't you just get rid of the Catholic? <laughs> That's the way I see it. I'm, I don't. I feel like they're gonna, as a whole, the organization is unwilling to change, um, even if uh, most of their followers say that they don't follow it. So th- to me, it seems a little bit like almost like a joke. Like I know you want to keep your religion, but your religion doesn't support you. So mm-hmm. the way I see it, I separate myself from it. But they don't, and it's the things I don't quite understand. But I appreciated what they had to say, and he was talking a lot about. Um, you know, we didn't get into biblical discussion or anything because That's I didn't want to. I didn't want to derail the conversation. Yeah. But hey, there are conversations of abortion in the Bible. Um, there, in the Book of Numbers, um, there's actually a reference to a woman's like a test to see if a woman is being unfaithful, and she's taken to like a temple, and she's given like you know you do all this stuff, and then you give it these things. They say bitter water, and then they say that if you know the the contents of her room are like expelled, then it's proof that she was being unfaithful. As in like she, she had like you know it, basically she had sex with another man, she got pregnant, and now you're gonna have an abortion because that's totally wrong for you to have an, uh, okay. an affair and also get pregnant from that guy you are making me like the bible less and less <laughs> no i'm yes. so yes. serious i i actually i, I have the excerpt is really long and like i said i kind of i almost brought up that conversation about what does the bible say but then i'm like you know what i don't want to derail the conversation from talking about the real issue as it affects us today because to be honest with you the most religious of people still get abortions it doesn't yeah. really it, it seems to not matter the fact that the organization is called catholics for change for, cho- uh, for choice for choice sorry <laughs> Um, made me feel a little more comfortable. Like, damn, you can be Catholic and still, you know what I mean? Like, the Pope it, says you can't. No, uh, yeah, but come on, realistically speaking, <laughs> <I'm joking>. realistically <laughs> speaking, so many people have a abor- well. Let me let me take that back. Oh, <laughs> so goodness. many people are pro-choice nowadays, even if they are Catholic, but they feel like it's taboo or they can't say it. And the fact that he's taken a stance or his organization has, you know, makes me feel a little more comfortable personally. That's like good. being, yeah, it's good. It, it is nice to see people. I think um, most of the people that are religious in my life are definitely progressive, and they feel that the, their religion, as it is now, whether that be Catholic, Islam, Buddhist, doesn't support their um, their views on things, mm-hmm. and they're changing it. Yeah, well, 
that's I mean, we're in a new world, ever evolving world, and I hope that for you guys who are listening today, that you got a lot out of this show. Um, you know what? No matter what your opinion is, legalize marijuana, don't legalize it. At least you have an option. Legal. Yeah, always have an option. You always have two sides of the story, and if you want to make a change, you know how to. We're gonna get out of here, guys, but we thank you so much as always for always listening. This has been another episode of Let Your Voice Be Heard. Stay tuned next week when we find out if Carrie Washington will marry me. Oh, stop. Yeah, she won't. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Everyone's a winner, making our fame. Burn the fight, hustle, making my name.